I'm here in Whistler Village with my good buddy, Jim McConkey, the legend of Whistler. Jim, it's so good to see you. Well, Harvey, it's a great privilege for me to see you because it's, you were one of my best uh, suppliers years ago and I made lots of money from all your, your, uh, your things that you sold us. And uh, so I had a great life here and I really enjoy uh, coming back to Whistler to see my son George play some golf at uh, Big Sky and, uh, and then come around. I can't believe how Whistler has grown. I knew what, that it was going to be a winner but I had no idea that it would get this big. And now it's the biggest ski area resort in North America. That's that's right. I remember the first time that I met you personally, um, I was coming to Whistler for the very first time and my dentist friend, uh, sorry, my dentist was a, was a friend of yours. He knew Paul you. Rondo. Anyway, he gave me uh, an album for me to give to you. Yeah. And um, I was so happy to give it to you. Was that Paul Ross? No, it was uh, Dr. Uh, Silver. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I forget his first name. But, yeah. I mean, I when I saw you, I, I, I also knew about you from all the ski magazines I used to read it as a teenager. And to meet you in person then was a thrill for me. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm just old enough. <laughs> I've, been, I've been around the ski area for a long time. I spent 10 years teaching for Alf Engen at Alpha, Utah. And then I was at Park City, Utah. I had the ski school there. And way long before that, I went, when Lugie Foger was my ski school director when I taught there in 1947, 48 at Gray Rocks in Quebec. And then he, he went back to Yosemite and I taught for three years at, at Badger Pass in Yosemite, California. And what made you come to Whistler? Well, I, uh, Eric Beardmore was a one of the Spitfire pilots in the Battle of Britain, and he came. He he was one of the original investors in Whistler with a group of businessmen from Vancouver. And Eric used to come to Alta and ski with me, and he was telling me about this. And uh, I knew that uh, the big mountains on the west coast would have tons of snow, snow in a long season, but nothing was really developed big there. And so uh, I knew that Whistler was coming up. And then one time he brought a guy by the name of Franz Wilhelmson. And I skied with Franz and Eric there at Alta, and they, they were telling me about it. And anyway, I got the ski school at Park City, and uh, I wanted to, I used to run a ski shop at Alta for three years or so, and people were always coming to me asking me what kind of stuff to buy. So I wanted to have the shop and the rentals, and, uh, and, the, and the ski school on a franchise basis. So after the first year at, at Park City, uh, we were going to negotiate another contract, and I said, look, I, 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 want, to, I want to have the shop and the rentals. And he said, well, come on, Enjoy, guys. Let's, let's, let's make a deal. I said, there's no deal to make. I'll pay you. You don't pay me. I pay you for operating on your property. Well, they didn't want to do that, but I had a real good offer at Todd Mountain Camel up in the bush in British Columbia. Near Kamloops. Near Kamloops, which, which became Sun Peaks. So anyway, I went up there and I worked my ass off and I made more money than I did at Park City. And... Uh, after four years there, in my fourth year, Franz Williamson sent Jack Wright, who was his manager at Whistler, and Dave uh, and Huey Smythe up to see if I'd be interested to take the ski school. In Whistler? In Whistler. And uh, Alan White and Roy Ferris were running it then, and uh, apparently uh, I said, I said, I, so I came down to talk to Franz. I said, what's going to happen with Alan and Roy? And he's, he said, well, I'm not going to renew their contract. He said, we'd like to have you, but if you're not interested, then uh, I'll look for somebody else. So I said, well, look, uh, he, he said, what do I have to pay you? And I said, you don't have to pay me anything. I'll pay you. Well, Franz was, you know, a good Norwegian. And, uh, not a bad deal. You know, so he thought, yeah, that's a good idea. So I came down in the spring of 1948. 
their 1968, and I had. Uh, the guy built, uh, it was a, it was a, they, they, he built the gondola and all that, uh, uh, Austrian guy. He built my shop there. Right at, right at the base of the gondola. Right at the base of the gondola, and uh, I had the shop and the rentals and the ski school. Well, I knew I could never make a living on the ski school because we had no beginner's area at the bottom. And uh, so uh, I ran the ski school for a number of years. And in 1981, Whistler had a lift the building out of the out of the village. Right. Uh, and uh, they knew they'd have a beginner area, so they wanted the ski school. So I had a two-year more uh, contract left on my contract. So uh, my lawyer made, negotiated a better deal for my shop and my rentals. But you know, originally, so I sold it. Uh, they sold uh, uh, the ski school, but I kept the shop and the rental for a number of years. But the reason Franz told me that, that they wanted to go up from the village from the beginning, but the trouble was they could not get access because of mining claims. I and, never knew. I never knew that. Oh yeah, because they couldn't get access. Well, Pierre Trudeau used to come out, and I used yes, to I remember that. I used yes. to ski with him a lot, and we became great friends. He was a great lover of classic music, as I, I did. And after we would ski, we come over to my house, and he loved the, the late string quartets of Beethoven. And you know, we we had a great rapport that way. Anyway, after that, we were able to get access to my claims, and so then they built. They go up from the village, which the village was where the garbage stuff was. Yes, a that's lot of right. People remember. I totally remember anyway, that. Anyway, that's where, it is. and then Whistler took off. And so there it is. There. So now when I come here, I can't believe my eyes. It's the biggest ski area in North America. Well, Jim, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to see you. <laughs> Good to see you, Harvey. It's been a long time. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay.